What's up everybody, it's Ty the Bourbon Guy and welcome back to another whiskey review. Today we are reviewing JTS Brown, Bottled in Bond. Bottled in Bond. <laughs> I don't know why that's always so hard for me to say, but either way, B-I-B, <laughs> JTS, all these initials, we're going to figure it out if it's going to be good at whiskey or not. So those that are not as familiar with this bottle, or maybe this bottle is not available in your area, but... This product is actually distilled by Heaven Hill Distilleries in Kentucky. And in my area, this bottle actually goes for anywhere between $12 to $15. Price is starting to creep up a little bit. But it's on the bottom shelf. A lot of the times I go in and see dust all over it. $12 bottle, $15, whatever. In that range, let's say sub $15 bucks <laughs> in my area. I think the word is starting to get out on this whiskey. I think that people are starting to figure out that you can spend a lot less on a whiskey and still get a very good product but it's time for us to put this to the test and see does it really hold up the price i think will help give some flexibility there to see because we're a lot more forgiving when we try a whiskey that's 12 dollars and it doesn't end up being good versus if we spend 150 dollars on something and it ends up not being very good so we're going to give this a shot today so bottled and bond so i kind of refer to that i'll put more as to what that means in the description but it is a way to guarantee, I don't want to say guarantee quality. It was a way to guarantee quality back in the day. But, you know, nowadays, at least when I see this, I know that it's at least four years old. I know that it was distilled by one distiller and one distilling season, and I know it's 100 proof. That's basically what I get out of it nowadays, is just kind of telling me what this means for this particular bottle but back in the day when there was a lot of sketchy things going on in whiskey i'm sure <laughs> that they were looking for bottled and bond all over the place i know i would be with some of these stories so the fact that this is a bottled and bond whiskey tells us it's at least four years old and again at that price point you're distilled by heaven hill which is a major distillery obviously in kentucky so looking at the label the label itself looks kind of old it kind of gives it that feel they're Kind of tapping into the JTS Brown family. You know, I, I feel like the label does a good job of kind of getting us there, right? Making us feel like this is an old whiskey. And especially when you find one that's got dust all over it, it really gives it that feel. <laughs> so I don't think there's anything. They're not trying to sell you on anything with this bottle, in my opinion. Kentucky's finest, things like that, maybe. But it's a very simple. And if you turn it around to the back, it's even more simple. Uh... Bottled and bond under U.S. government supervision. Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 100 proof, right? So There's not really too much on this bottle where they're trying to sell me on something. And I appreciate that. So, screw top here, which makes sense. Everybody knows I'm a cork person. <laughs> uh, and, you know, screw top at a $12 price point. I get it. I'm okay with it. It would probably be weird if this had a cork. <laughs> so, screw top. Makes perfect sense. Let's try it. Pour some. And one for good luck. A lot of luck. <laughs> All right, let's see what's going on on the nose. Caramel vanilla, definitely there. It's not really too much more. There's not really too much going on. I don't know that I really get any spices there. There's some darker notes. I don't think it's like a tobacco leather type of note, but it's kind of like in that in that family. This is going to be weird to say, but it reminds me, it's got a, to me it has some type of leather note in there, but it's like, uh, not like real leather. If you've ever smelled real leather versus like pleather, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's, it's on the pleather side, but it's still there. It's like, it's not, it's not jumping out at me, but I, if I look for it, I can find it there. But not overly complex. And again, at that price point, I don't know that we're looking for it to be overly complex. It just kind of is what it is. But there are plenty of $12 whiskeys that I have seen or have tried. Ugh. <laughs> that the nose is not even tolerable, let alone the palate. So the nose on this is not off-putting at all. If you put this in a blind and I were to just smell it, I wouldn't think that this was a $12 bottle. But again, not overly complex, so I would expect this not to be a high price bottle either. So, enough with the nose. Let's get to the palate. Cheers. 
The palette is a little brighter than I thought it would be. I would think that given that leathery, it's not really a tobacco, but just kind of some of those notes that I had on the nose, I would think this would be a little bit, and it's probably a weird thing to say, a darker palette, <laughs> but uh, that's what I would kind of expect on the palette, but it's a little brighter. So not really orange peel or anything like that, but it's kind of like going into a fruity type of palette. But then when I go back to the nose, I actually do pick up more fruit. The caramel is definitely there. That's like the number one note for me. It's almost like a red fruit, but not, it's like a, maybe a raspberry. But I definitely get more, now that I've tried it, I get more fruit on the nose than I did the initial time I nosed the glass. Let's try it again. There is a slight metallic on the on the palette, but again, it's it's not overpowering by any means. And and there's so many whiskeys that I've had that are really really cheap bottles that end up that metallic note is heavy, and it makes me not want to drink any of it. <laughs> but I can think of right now behind me, I can think of a bottle that I paid a lot of money for. And I'd prefer this one over that. I can tell you that right away. So just because the price is there doesn't really mean the quality is not going to be slight metallic. That's the only off-putting note that I have. But at 100 proof, still warms. It still has depth of flavor. And at a minimum of four years, I would imagine this is probably right at four years. You know you're still getting a very good quality bourbon as well. This is always a, a tough game to play, but I would imagine if I tried this blind and had no idea what it was and I had to guess the price, I would probably think 20 to $25 price range. So the fact that you're getting this bottle for 12 to 15 and I'm thinking it's almost double that is a very good sign. And it's weird to say that with a $15 bottle to a $30 bottle, but if you put that in perspective, like... If you drank a bottle that cost you $50, but it drank like it was a $100 bourbon, <laughs> that would seem pretty awesome, right? So I think in perspective, the fact that it drinks like a $20, $25 bourbon, but yet it's only $12 to $15, something like that, that's, a, that's saying a lot, especially with the competition it has at $12. The competition that you would have at a $50 bottle is way different <laughs> than what you're having at a $12 price range. So, I think this is a prime example of, with whiskey, it's different than wine and beer and anything like that where, um, maybe not so much beer, I think beer kind of can be this way too, but with wine especially, it seems like those prices go up with the better quality products. With bourbon, a lot of the times it has to do with distribution because you have maybe a craft distiller that's bottling something very young, but it's... A $70 bottle, but you have a, a distillery like Heaven Hill that's distilling JTS Brown and able to sell it for $12. So a lot of the times it has to do with distribution more so than the quality of whiskey and also the amounts that they're able to produce at one time. And so when you see a $12 bottle, I'm not saying that every $12 bottle is great because <laughs> that's definitely not the case, but I'm just saying this is a prime example of where it's important to just try something before you just rule it out as a bad whiskey. We're going to add water because I add water to everything. We're going to see if that improves it at all or if it kind of hurts it. So right at the 100 proof mark, there's a chance that this might open this up. But again, at that price point, maybe not overly complex. So maybe there's not too much more there, but there's only one way to find out, and that's to actually try it. All right, swish the water around. <laughs> Let's try it out. So I would say already the nose I prefer without the water. It's almost like a... The nose actually seems sweeter to me now, like a sugary sweet. Almost smells like candy or some type of dessert with the water. 
And although that may sound good, I still prefer the original nose versus with the water. But it's but even adding the water, I still get flavor, and it's not bad by any means. All right, let's try it. Cheers. On the palate, I don't know that it really did anything. I mean, if anything, maybe it feels a little bit more watered down. But taste-wise, there's not really much of a difference. I think with some of the spice, even with the water, it still tastes like it's at 100 proof. <laughs> I don't know that I'd be able to, to identify a difference if I added the water or if I didn't. That'd be another interesting experiment, right? I have one glass with water, one without, and see if I can tell. But I don't really, the spice is still there, so it still feels like it's at 100 proof. I think that might just be a preference thing. So if you do get this bottle or if this is available in your area and you do try it for $12 to $15, <laughs> uh, I think maybe you just experiment for yourself and see which one you prefer. I think this is definitely more of a preference thing to me or maybe even a mental game where I tell myself it's better need or I don't know. But just looking at it and trying it, I don't know that I can really taste that big of a difference in the palate with the water. Going back to the nose, the ethanol is, that ethanol note is starting to be there. I didn't really get that in the first few times, but for some reason now it's starting to pick up, which is odd because normally I feel like I get that in the front end and then as it opens up, that starts to go away. This was the opposite. I started to get it as it sat here, but it's not like a heavy ethanol that's too aggressive or makes this non-approachable. All right, let's finish it. Cheers. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with this one. <laughs> At this price point, I would take it all day. I mean, $12 to $15, it's not... Th that is probably... And Heaven Hill also makes this along with the Evan Williams Bottle and Bond as well. And I know a lot of people kind of put that in the same category. These two would be interesting to see them head-to-head -head and see how different they really are. But I think they both serve the same purpose, that I could drink this neat and be okay. Obviously, I can't tell that much of a difference between this and the water. Adding a cocktail, absolutely. Throw it in, you know, if you want to make a certain cocktail. I actually use JTS Brown every year around Thanksgiving. There's a cocktail that I make in one of those big jugs that has apple and cinnamon, apple cider, all that stuff. And I use two bottles of JTS Brown within there. And it is a phenomenal cocktail. So, and at $12, <laughs> I don't mind throwing it in there. So, this is one of those ones, I think the secret's out. I think people know about JTS Brown now. So, hopefully I'm not ruining anything. <laughs> but, I think if this is available, and I know this is not available everywhere, but if this is available in your area at those price points, I think this is a buy. I think there's no risk involved at that price. You can try it. And again, if you don't like it, you can make it, mix it with a cocktail and be absolutely fine. And then when it's gone, you're done, but you no harm, no foul at $12, right? So this is one, when I finish this, I'll buy it again for sure. But I still don't think it's overly complex. I don't think there's really too much going on here. This is very, uh, like a right down the middle type of whiskey. Um, so with the fact that it's kind of fighting two different battles at one time, I think this, for what the purpose is of this whiskey, I think it's perfect. It's supposed to be a very good whiskey at, at a $12 price range. So I would take this all day over any other whiskey that's probably in that price range. But in terms of complexity, depth of flavor, that's lacking. And I expect that to be lacking at that price range. So... With all that said, at the end of the day, <laughs> what that means is I'm going to rate this a 90 out of 100. I think that Heaven Hill has done a great job at providing a budget-friendly bottle that is available. It used to be a Kentucky exclusive. I can get it here in Indiana. I've heard of a few different states starting to get it. So not available everywhere, but where it is available, I've, I typically do see it on the shelves all the time. So I don't really have an issue getting this. And because of that, I would say this is a go-to bottle. Definitely always have it on my bar, have it on my shelf, and I'll mix it all day long if anybody wants to mix something because I can replace the bottle again at $12. So for what it is, I think it's a great whiskey.
I appreciate you tuning into today's review. Thank you so much for all the support to the channel. Make sure you like and subscribe and do all that fun stuff that everybody always tells you to do. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next review. Cheers.